Hello everyone, welcome to Catherine's Creatures, and this is episode 72. This is a series where we get a touch base and talk about various mythological beasts, beings, and the like pulled from lore worldwide. And I always like to preface by saying that I am not a linguist, so if I mispronounce anything along the way, I apologize in advance. Now, with that said, we're going to be talking about today about the Jinn. J-I-N-N, -N, and later started being spelled D-J-I-N-N, -N, and what has since then been anglicized as the genie, or genies. Now, we're going to be talking about the precursor to what we perceive as the modern-day genie, um, well before Aladdin and the Lamp, and uh, Alibaba and the Thousand and One um, Nights. We're going back to the origin of this, this uh, entity. And they are these perceived predominantly as invisible um, creatures, though that's not always the case. I'll get to that in a little bit of time. But they, uh, the concept kind of developed around this um, pre-Islamic um, Arabian religious belief system, uh, though even um, though the jinn has lasted kind of the test of time and has still been um, talked about, believed um, in more modern day Islamic culture and again, belief systems. Um, they are kind of parallel. Well, the more modernized jinn are kind of parallel to humans in many ways, including the fact that we, uh, we they are held accountable for their deeds. They are neither deemed as purely evil or purely good, more often than not something in between. But, uh, again, they are not human, they're other, and it is interesting evolution of um, how people in the Islamic faith have perceived jinn over time. Now, before I get too much into that, too, I do want to say that, again, some of the interesting parallels between jinn and humans is that um, they can either be, the jinn can either be uh, believers or non-believers, in the Muslim faith, it just depends on if they, how they accept um, God, essentially, in their lives. Um, the original jinn was probably not strictly Islamic. It probably was actually a fusion between pre-Islam and um, other um, neighboring paganistic beliefs. And that's theorized because the word jinn um, is not traced to the Islamic language, and, and so it is believed that the concept of the jinn kind of came from a fusion of um, religious beliefs merging in some way. Now, with that said, what are jinn? So uh, they are predominantly invisible creatures, entities. Um, sometimes they can form thin or what's described um, as thinner, subtle body bodies. When I hear that, I keep thinking like ghosts or poltergeists, but I don't think that's exactly right. Um, with that said, they can change their form at will or become invisible at will. They can take forms of some physical entities or creatures, including, including one of their favorite forms to choose, which is the snake, but they also can change into lizards, scorpions, and even humans, a human form. Because of that, they have been known to have sexual affairs and even have offspring with humans. Now, um, if injured in their physical state, they usually seek revenge <laughs> or vengeance. And um, this can be in form of a physical act or a possession of the, um, the person who has harmed them, their offenders, uh, body, and they will remain in possession of that body until they are exercised. Because of this and some of their less savory um, attributes and actions, people have developed talismans to wear to kind of protect themselves and ward off um, gins uh, or any gins that have come to uh, seek vengeance on people. And um, so, okay, going back to that, um, they are mortal which was interesting. I didn't realize, I never thought of jinn as mortal, but they are mortal, they can die. And because of that, um, actually affects a couple things, because of that, they can or have to seek judgment um, from God once they die, just like people. Um, they have always been deemed less than gods. Though originally, they were probably more elevated to almost a demigod status um, because though they were less than gods, they were more than humans and had this, um, uh, they affected the world, the day-to-day -day life of the populations 
um, more intimately than the deities. And so they had this almost level, elevated level of being kind of quasi-worshipped. And because of that, the more modern day Islamic beliefs, um, for instance, the Quran, which talks about the jinn or mentions the word jinn 29 times in the Quran, they condemn the pre-Islamic practices of worshiping them because the Quran and, um, during people who believe in that view jinn as kind of parallel to humans. So they're not humans, but they're of the same kind of elevate, uh, same level as what we are in respect. And again, they get judged by God, by their deeds, their actions. Um, they die, they have to deal with the afterlife just the same as any person. Um, so I thought that was really kind of cool because I never, again, when I think of genies, I think of Aladdin and the lamp predominantly. But um, going back to the precursor and the original lore, it was just very, very different. So if you have any questions about this or anything else, post them in the comments below or message me on or reach out to me on any social media. And until next time, skull.